Hey everybody, welcome to Fit Tip Tuesday and happy Thanksgiving week. I think I'm going to take a few days off this week. I spent the past two weekends teaching top down center out pants fitting. So what I'd like to do today is sort of give you a little bit of a review of the method working with my pants fitting students and some tips for learning the process, as well as I want to sh talk about whether or not well-fitting pants have wrinkles. Now, wrinkles are always one of the top concerns or topics in pants fitting, and I think when we're fitting pants for ourselves, we tend to get over critical because we're making our own garment and we really, you know, we're scrutinizing how the fabric is hanging on our body and we're trying to create this perfect fitting pair of pants. Now, let me circle back and just start with reviewing my experiences teaching top down center out. The number one thing I want to say is using top down center out to fit a one leg muslin will save you a ton of time and fabric. So how does it save you time? Let's go with that. The first thing is you're not going to need to take a ton of measurements to pick your size. And if you're curious about my thoughts on picking sizes, um, check out the videos in the playlist. I'm putting the link below. So I did a whole video on picking the right size or sizes. You're not going to be blending between sizes on the same line. So for example, um, if you need a larger size for your waist and a smaller size for your hips and thigh area, you're going to pick one size for the side seam and then a different size for the center back and crotch seam instead of blending from a bigger size to a smaller size on the side seam. So that allows you to get your size without changing the shape of the draft. So that's the first thing that I think is a little bit liberating and less time consuming. You do not need to measure your crotch length because you're going to be adding to the top of the waistline to give yourself room to balance the front and back crotch from the top down along with the inseam and a parallel to the floor hem before you start fitting center out to the side seam. The next way it saves you time is that you're only cutting out one leg, you're sewing it together, and then you start the fit process. So you don't have to take the time to put together an entire muslin with two legs. Now this also saves you fabric because you can use half the amount of fabric for your muslin that you normally would because you only need one leg. And you can use that single one leg muslin over and over to play with different fit adjustments. So what allows you to do that? What allows you to do that is you make yourself a separate fitting waistband. Now, the waistband, because it's not attached to the legs, allows you to fit this onto your body where it's comfortable for you to wear before you start even worrying about how the pants are fitting. And having that anchor to put your one leg muslin onto really makes it a lot easier to then fit that leg because the waistline has already been fitted, the position of it is selected, and then it's a matter of putting the one leg muslin on, attaching it to the center back, center front, and then along the waist as you work with your fitting. So having the separate waistband really helps with starting the fitting process, but also makes it easier because if you're working with a two-leg muslin and there's no waistband, 
One of the biggest things I see students struggle with is, number one, fitting the top of the waist. So in previous classes, I would teach my pants fitting using a two-leg muslin, and one of the first things you want to do is get it on your body and fit it around your waist so it's not shifting and moving and um, not hanging properly. And I always find it very interesting how... I don't want to say hard, but for some pants fitting students to actually fit the top of the pants so they don't have to like pinch it at the sides or grab it more in the front as they're doing the rest of their fitting was pretty difficult. I'll be honest, I was always surprised at how much students had to really work at darting around the top of the waist to get it to stay or and also adjusting the side seams. So the fact that you've got a fitted anchor to attach your pants onto is going to make that a lot easier for you. Now you can work with a straight waistband. So this is literally a straight piece of fabric um, or you can work with a contoured waistband. You know, whatever's more comfortable for you. I think if you're just starting out with top down center out, Working with a straight waistband is the easiest thing to do. A straight waistband is going to sit at your smallest measurement. That's what it wants to do. So if you have a defined waist or somewhere on your body that is the smallest measurement and a waistband is comfortable for you there, start with a straight waistband um, and then you can, you know, and then you can move on to working with the leg. Now, in the top down center out classes I taught the past two weekends, I've had students who have never made pants before, and I've also had students who have gone through numerous muslins without the success they wanted. So it was really cool to see that range of experience in my class. And to tell you the truth, at the end of the class, everybody's finished one leg muslin and some people had time to actually sew two legs together to test it further everybody had a pants muslin that fit them pretty well so it was really exciting and it was so fun to watch and to teach I just really um I don't know these past two weekends felt like vacation to me that's how much fun it was so here's something I want you to think about when you're learning a new method like top down center out. Start working with the process with the idea in mind that you're going to learn the process. Don't start the method with I'm going to make a pair of pants. Now of course learning the method is going to allow you to make a pair of pants but if you're learning how to do this workflow you want to really pay attention to how the how it works and how to make adjustments. And then once you've got that down, you can then use that new skill that you've learned to make your first pair of pants. All right, so I recommend picking a pattern that has a wider leg so the fabric is not going to catch on your knee or your calf. This allows you to just focus on fitting the leg without worrying about more things that will take more skill to fit, like adjusting for a slimmer leg, takes a little bit more skill. So start with something that is simple. I highly recommend the Peppermint Wide Leg Pants, and I'll put a link to that in the description below. So if you haven't been following along in this series, you can easily find it. This pants pattern fits you through the waist and hip and then flares off of your full hip, almost like a skirt. So really, it's almost like you have two skirts on your legs, but it is so modern and classic. I didn't think I liked wide leg pants, but I really love the peppermint pants that I made. And they were super easy to work with. It's a very nice pattern. So picking the pattern is the first step. Then after you create your fitting waistband and the peppermint pants actually has a curved waistband so you can cut out the three pieces it has a back piece and two side you know a left and right front pieces so if you want to cut those out in your size and create your contoured fit waistband then you can use that contoured fit waistband for other pants so take your time to make the waistband 
and I'm going to put um, the link to the waistband tutorial in the description below so you can easily find it. Then you're going to cut out your legs and you're going to prepare your pattern. Now I have a tutorial showing you how to prepare your pattern. Basically you're going to add length to the top of the pattern and to the side of the pattern so you have room to adjust where the waistline sits front and back and also you can fit the side seams separately. Um, of course my love of this new method has inspired me to make some new pants because I don't have any pants patterns that are really appropriate to work with top down center out because one of the biggest premises um, that Ruth has worked with so if you don't know Ruth Collins designed this method and she spent a lot of time researching it she recommends looking for a quality made pattern that has graded sizes and it has a picture and a line drawing on it so you can use the style of the pants to guide your fitting now I don't have any of those pants patterns I do have my khaki pants but that's such an old pattern and it's not size inclusive it was one of the first patterns I made and I only made it to size 16 so I don't want you to even go look for that because I want to make patterns that fit a inclusive size range so I am working on my first dress pant, which is gonna be a basic pants pattern. It's gonna have a straight waistband and it's going to have a leg that's fitted, but doesn't catch on your knee or calf. And you can see here, this is what my one leg muslin looks like. I'm in early testing phase and you can see it fits pretty well. I'm super excited. So let me just show you my one leg muslin that I use to um, work with this and just I just wanted to see how it was going to go together. When I draft my patterns, I don't draft them to fit me perfectly. I draft them with all the information I've learned through fitting hundreds of women and trying to come up with that balance of what will accommodate most shapes. Now, Top Down Center Out has also shown me that the actual shape of the crotch is not so important. And I really tested this in my top down center out class this past weekend. We were using my happy pants, which is a sloper, not a fashion pattern. And if you guys are familiar with my happy pants pattern, I have a average and low hip shape to accommodate an average butt and a low butt and I will tell you that that does work. I don't want to say that using a crotch curve that's designed to fit your shape does not work because it does. But also, if you're using top down center out, I decided to just work with the average hip curve for every student in the class and it fit everybody's shape. So this is very interesting to me and I think Part of it is you can use the darts to control the shape of the crotch and help it shape to different butt shapes. And you have to remember, and this is something I've really started to think about differently, a crotch shape is not a static shape. So you look at your pants pattern and you see a crotch shape in paper, it's a static shape. But the minute you transfer it to fabric, it becomes fluid. And it's really not a curve of any specific size because your crotch curve is running through the bias grain line and it stretches and changes shape. So my new pants pattern I'm working on has a significantly different crotch curve than my happy pants. And when I was fitting my happy pants, you can see here is my finished muslin for my happy pants. The crotch shape is completely different than my new pants pattern. And if you compare the two, let's put them together, you can see that they fit me almost identically and the crotch shapes are completely different. So stop worrying about crotch shapes so much, um, especially if you're working with top down center out. I think what helps you there is you have the extra length, center front, center back, and along the entire waistline, and that helps you 
by doing this, either picking up the back, lowering the back, picking up the front, and then working towards the sides, helps you define the actual length of your front and back crotch. So super exciting. So I want to just show you how I marked my um, my fit muzzle in for my new pattern. And this is how you would be marking it if you were working with this at home on any pattern. So you can see here, I have drawn some blue lines on my pattern. Those represent the original top edge of the pattern. So this blue line is the the original top edge of the waistline on the pattern, and this blue line along the side seam is my original stitching line. Now notice, I have fabric above the waist. In this case, I added three inches across my front and back waistline, and I also created a little wedge, meaning I straightened out the side seam from the hip to the top of the pattern, creating a little wedge here. So you can see my side seam is straight all the way to the top. Now for me, because I'm more of a rectangle shape, I didn't have to come in and create a hip curve when I fit the side seam. It stayed straight. But of course, that could be different for every shape and size because you may have more of a curve and then um, you would adjust for that later. But to start out, I had my original markings. And then after fitting, I marked the top of my Velcro on my waistline. Now, if you look at this Velcro, the Velcro is on the outside of the waistband. And so when you're wearing it, it's literally, I'm just going to put it here like it's attached. So this is my, this is my center back. So my center back would be, oh, this is, I'm going to use my straight waist hand. So my center back, let's use this one, would be here. And of course it would be attached to the center back. And you can see I'm lining it right up with the top of the Velcro here. Okay, you can see that. And then as you fit, it goes across to the center front. And the inside of this muslin is not shellacked with Velcro. It's very important to note that inside the pants, if you decide you want to use Velcro, um, check, you know, check the tutorial, but you can see there's only two little pieces of soft Velcro that basically act like a pin to hold the waistband on while you're fitting other parts of the waistline. That way you're not having to spend so much time pinning along the waistband. I spent a lot of time pricking myself when I was pinning, so that's why I've moved to Velcro. Now that's not to say you don't have to pin, because once you have a fit that you like, it is important to add a few pins in there to hold the pants on the waistband exactly where it is. So you can take the waistband off, slide it off your leg, and then mark the top of the, of the muslin. So that's how the inside would be looking against my body. And this is how it would look from the right side. And you can see that because I've got this half inch Velcro, which represents the seam allowance of the waistband, I can dash along the top of it and I can very easily feel for that position. So if there wasn't Velcro here, it'd be harder to really, I mean, you could still feel it, but you would have to really pay attention and get that at a half an inch. So that re represents your stitching line, the stitching line for the, the legs. So what do you need to do in addition to marking your position on the waistband, you have to add the seam allowance above that so that you have a seam allowance to sew the legs to your waistband when you're finished. So the process is to get this to where you get your waistband on your body where it fits, have it be secure so it's not shifting around, slide your one leg muslin on, start working from the top, center front, center back to get the inseam to hang straight, also to get the hem parallel to the floor. Then you start working out to the side and you're gonna fit your side seam. And a couple of the students this weekend said to me, well, I have to take more out of the back than the front. 
And I'm like, yes, you do. Isn't that kind of cool? So the cool thing is because you've got this one leg muzzle in, you can pay attention to what the side seam is doing. And you may in fact need to take in the back more than the front or vice versa, depending on your shape. But you're, you can do that. And this is so now, but when I tried it on, I left it open from my crotch level up so I could play with the front and back. And in this case, they worked out to be even, so I just sewed it up. But you may end up with fabric that you have to offset, meaning you have to take more out of the front or more out of the back, and these edges would be uneven. So keep that in mind. One thing about fitting the side seam and this was something early on I kind of had to really pay attention to, you want to make sure at the side seam you fit that so it's snug against your waistband. The first couple of times that I did top down center out with myself, I didn't quite fit that, and so there was extra in there. And then when I went to sew the waistband to the legs, my the top of my waistline was too big because I built in more ease than really I needed by not carefully fitting that side seam onto the waistband. So that's another um, thing to pay attention to. Another thing is, and this is really how you're going to learn this method. I can teach it to you and you can watch tutorials, but until you spend quality time in front of a two mirror system, you're not going to really develop the skill for it. And I, what I mean by that is you want to take your time. You want to look at yourself in the mirror. You want to look at what's happening in the front. You want to see what's happening in the back. You want to make small adjustments by taking your center front, or I'm sorry, here's your center back, you know, take your center back, you know, slide it up a little and see what it does. So you can reposition you know, and then move it up a little bit, see what happens. S notice how that changes, how the back leg is hanging. Notice how it's changing the front leg. So just because you make an adjustment in the front doesn't mean it's not going to affect the back. That's the thing about adjusting the crotch, center front, center back. The vertical position of those edges affect both the front and the back. And I mentioned last week during Fit Tip Tuesday that you can create wrinkles by over adjusting. So if you pull up the back way too high, notice what it does to the back and the front leg and play with that at the side seam, play with it at the center front. That will give you information on what can cause a wrinkle. So if you're seeing a wrinkle, you might notice, oh, I think my front is pulled up too high or it's not pulled up high enough or whatever it is. But you really need to spend quality time with your mirrors and your one leg muzzle in to get the hang of this. So that is my, um, my biggest tip is take your time. Once you think you've got something that you like in terms of fit, pin along, you know, add some pins, then take it off, but don't take it off here. Take it off your waist and then mark it, or better yet, take it off, put it away, come back the next day and try it on again, because I guarantee you, fit with it some more, you might fine tune the fit and make it fit even a little bit better. So multiple fittings on the same muslin will help you achieve the fit you're looking for, because you may notice the second day that you try it on that, oh, I need to lift up the back a little bit more, or I need to, you know, move the dart. That's the other thing. Baste your darts in because you may decide you need to move them because they're not in the right spot, or you need to lengthen them or shorten them. So always baste your darts. And, you know, remember that darts fit the hollows of your body, meaning in the back, it's going to fit the small of your back but it also directs the fabric to travel down your leg. So darts are a two, two important things they do. They help fit the waist, but they also direct the fabric. So, so pay attention to what the darts are doing as you're watching and, and looking in the mirror and fitting yourself. So that is, those are my 
biggest impressions with Top Down Center Out. I hope these um, tips help you. To finish up today, I want to show you my lovely fitting leg. Here. Okay, so to finish up today, I just want to show you how pants live on your body when you're actually moving around. Here is my lovely fitting one leg muslin. Now let's just watch what happens when I move around. How's it looking right now? See? Look at those wrinkles. <laughs> I just think this is funny because you spend so much time, you know, fitting and trying to smooth those wrinkles. But the fact of the matter is, there's always going to be wrinkles in your pants depending on how you're standing, even if you think you fit them to yourself perfectly. So I want everyone to take a deep breath and just <sighs> relax the relax and enjoy your pants fitting journey. All right, and so then notice, um, without making any of adjustments, here's my pants again. So basically after I did all of this moving around, I just stood back up straight and they fit nicely again. So I, I just thought that was kind of an eye-opening thing to look at because you're gonna have wrinkles. So I think when you're making pants, free yourself of worrying about every wrinkle because how often are you standing still in life? I, for me, I'm always running around. So for people to see me in pants, um, me standing still in pants almost never happens. So I'm always moving and shaking and that's how my pants are gonna look. So I hope you enjoyed that. So I think the two most important things when you're making pants for yourself are make pants that are the style that you want to wear, right? And if you're not sure if you like a style, but you're curious, try it and live in them for a week and see if you in fact do like them. Pick a pattern that looks like the style you want to make. And remember, it's the pattern's job to fit you, not you fit the pattern. So don't look at a style and think to yourself, oh, I could never wear that. You don't know if you can wear it until you try it. And also, make sure it's comfortable. If you get this fit and you've fitted it to the point where it's completely smooth and it looks lovely when you're standing, but you can't move and it's uncomfortable when you sit or walk, you could do that if you want to. But to me, the most important thing is that it's comfortable. So take your time. Pick a pattern that you are interested in trying to make because you think it looks cool and it might be something you want to wear. Make them up, wear them for a while, and then you can go back and fine tune and change things about it after you've lived in them for a while. So I've always said that regardless of the style of pants fitting that you're using, the best way to tell if your pants are fitting the way you like is to actually live in them for a while. So that's when I usually discover, ooh, I need to raise my waistband or I need to lower my waistband because it doesn't sit comfortably when I get in and out of the car, for example. Next week, I'm gonna show you how I fit jeans with a back yoke using top-down center out method. I had the opportunity to test this out with 20 women at the Jacksonville ASG. So I tested it and I will have pictures of some of the finished jeans to show you as well. So that's what I'll be doing next week. Join me for FabFit Friday this week, day after Thanksgiving. I'm going to be um, working on my new top. And also, I'm going to be sharing my yummy turkey soup recipe. So if you have recipes, bring those along and join me 1 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions, post them below and I will help you. And have a fabulous Thanksgiving. I'll see you on Friday.